All right, welcome back to another tutorial in Maya. It is Thanksgiving here in the United States, and so if you are stateside, I wish you a happy Thanksgiving, and um, there you go. <laughs> uh, I have a few moments here before I have to cut out and go to the eat some turkey, and you're missing out if you're anywhere else in the world and you're not celebrating Thanksgiving. Well, you're missing turkey and gravy and cranberry sauce and all sorts of good stuff, but anyway... Uh, that's that. I just wanted to say thank you to all my subscribers and uh, thank you for Maya and thanks for all the wonderful opportunities I have in life because of this program. And um, yeah, it's a great thing. So happy Thanksgiving. Okay, so check it out. This little message, I just did some quick animation on a Boolean uh, cutout. Um, and it's real easy to do. Kind of just want to show you how to do it. So you can have fun playing around with some text and some Boolean cutouts. Uh, <laughs> okay, so let's get started. Let's take a look at um, what to do. And this is going to be a very short tutorial. Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this one really quick. So anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down here to my uh, beginning cutout file here. I don't need to save that. And uh, here we go. Okay, so... Essentially, this is really easy. Um, all you need to do is create yourself some text. I just went up to create, went down to the, my text options right there. And in this case, I am just using my name here, Deep Fried Ectoplasm, with the um, bevel. And um, I have my bevel width at, at zero right there. So essentially, those are my, my starting points. Okay? And I'm using the impact font. Now, some fonts work better, um, just depending on what you're doing. Um, I find Impact is kind of a great font to use for, you know, just all sorts of stuff. So anyway, I went ahead and hit Create. So there you go. So type in what you want there, and you're good to go. Next, what I did is just created a plane. And you want to create, or I mean, a, a, a cube. And what you want to do is just make sure that you have some divisions in this cube. If I come over here to my cube, take a look at uh, what I got set up there. There's my cube. And this is a copy of a cube, so it's actually, um, uh, you know, I already have my division set from prior. So anyway, just make sure that you have some divisions in here. You know, put some inside there, and you should be good to go. And what I want to do is just sort of take this, this cube and kind of put it, you know, so a little bit of the text it comes through the back side there and a little bit of text in the front. So you want to have that sort of on both sides. And then it's really easy. All you need to do, and the, um, the matter of selection in this is important. You want to select your cube first and then select your text. And then just make sure you're in your polygon menu set, come up into your mesh, go to Booleans, and go to Difference. And when you do that, you'll notice Maya will take a, a second or two to kind of calculate some things. And there you go. You have a cutout. But look what what happened we actually sacrificed the text okay and we don't really want to do that what we want to do before we do that I'm gonna go ahead and just undo that boolean what I want to do is is select my text first and I want to duplicate that so I'm gonna do a command D okay and I'm gonna bring this out here a little bit now I want to select my cube I'm gonna select that text that we're gonna essentially sacrifice and we're gonna go to mesh booleans and difference Maya will think for a moment, and there you go. So now we have text, and we have this uh, we have this cutout. So if I put my text back in there, it fits real nice. There you go. You can see it's on both sides. And let's take a deeper look at the boolean here. Um, here you go. So we have all our parts. You can see the parts are all nicely. Let's get in here a little closer. They're all cut out very nice okay now the problem with booleans is that sometimes you can come up with a surface that is sort of a a triangle surface and you have to kind of be aware of this we're not going to be too concerned about it for the moment but i'm going to sort of come deeper into here you know this this would be like a triangle okay and if you're working in quads these are all four-sided you know quads sometimes triangles can appear and you need to fix that but for the moment we're not going to be too concerned about this because it's just a you know it doesn't we don't need to be concerned about it with this exercise so just so you're aware 
Now, the next thing you might want to do, I'm going to go back into object mode here, is I'm going to take my, uh, my cube and my text, and I'm going to select them both there. Let's get over here. And what I want to do is maybe take my center pivot from both of these and just recenter the center pivot. So I'll, I'll go ahead and select the text first, and I'm going to go to Modify, Center Pivot. Okay, that puts the pivot point in the middle, which is cool. And then I'm going to grab my overall dealio here, and I'm going to go to Modify, and I'm going to modify the center pivot there. So technically, both of our objects should have the same center pivoting point, which is cool. Okay, now, you might ask, what are we going to do with this next? Well, what I want to do is I might as well just grab my outliner over here and take a look at, at what I have. Here is my poly surface 5 and here is my text. I'm going to shift select my text. So it's these two elements together. Um, I want to parent those. I don't want to group them. Um, and I'm going to parent them for a very specific reason. So first of all, what we want to do is select the text first and then we want to select our other object, um, this object, the box object, and just go over into your general tab and hit parent right there. Okay, and that should, if you select this now, I'm going to just call this my parent group or something. All right, and there we go. So now I can select the parent group and move everything around, and this will actually follow this object. So you do have independent choices here. I can, I can grab my box right here, or I can grab the text right there. So that's kind of what we're, what we're going to be looking at. All right. Now, let's get to the animation. I have about 700 frames set here. No big deal. And I think what I'll do is we'll grab that group, that parent group and just sort of move this up a little bit and we'll move it back kind of to the center and you may want to look at the overall um, in your channel box let's just look at what the overall settings are here because eventually you know in some cases you might want to center it out and whatnot and then reset these transforms so if i did that and if let's just say that this is hypothetically my starting point i could go ahead and just sort of do modify and freeze transformations and oh, yep there we go and now it's set at a zero point so anytime I could move this group anywhere and bring it back to its original position by just going zero and zero and there it is okay so let's do this let's animate this kind of quickly uh, I have auto keyframing turned on so if you turn on your auto keyframing that's cool and we want to look at where we're, what we're doing. Let's just say I want to bring this from that point up here down to there. So let's go ahead and set this at zero. All right. And let's make sure we're at our first frame. And because I'm only moving it on the Y axis, all I need to do is just leave that there. And I'm going to hit key selected. And let's say I move it forward a few frames and drop it down a little bit. By having auto keyframing on, it automatically added that next keyframe, which is cool. Okay, so we just animated that to sort of go up and down. If I move it up and down, you can see where that, that's, that's that. Okay, well, let's do something a little more unique with this overall group first. Let's sort of take that and then let's move it over here to say 200 and maybe rotate it, uh, do some rotation. But remember, it's going to take place from this keyframe right here so if I set that there and bring this over to say like 180 I may want to sort of set keyframes on on everything um, it may or may not be the case you'll 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 get it in a little bit I'm gonna set keyframes there but I want to sort of move this around so I'm gonna go ahead and just sort of do something like something like that all right and let's see here so we have this coming up and down and you can see where it now took on those those changes but it negated everything that we did here in the beginning i mean we we have our drop on the y-axis but we've just essentially just reoriented that on its um on its y okay so anyway just be aware that that strange things can happen when you start to keyframe everything before we were just trans, um, just keyframing this Y value. So let's do that. Let's come back here and let's grab our set right up here. And let's go back and set everything at zero. 
All right. And let's, because we have the group chosen, we might as well do a um, edit and delete. We'll delete um, our keys. We'll delete keys. Okay. So that now took those keys away. So now we can sort of do the same thing um, with that overall group. Um, we can keyframe it to do anything we want. I'm going to start a keyframe there again. I'm going to go to key selected. And I'm going to bring it forward a little bit and I'm going to drop this down. And there we go. And technically, since I have auto keyframing on, it should have keyframed it. And it did not. So let's bring this back up to zero and start again. <laughs> You'll, it'll take you a few tries to sort of get this this underway, and I'm just trying to show you what the various process is, um, you know, to get this done. So now we have that there. Let's go ahead and at the zero mark, let's key that, and let's bring it forward, and let's move this down. And technically, oh, it's oh, I see why because I'm I'm ch I've chosen the Z. Um, <clears throat> the Z uh, attribute here. So let's do this. Let's come up here and let's just delete that again. Keys, delete keys. Okay, so let's go to our Y transform. <laughs> bring it up and we'll go ahead and right mouse click and key select it. And bring that over here and we'll bring this down and it'll add its keyframe. I'll bring it over here and in this case, let's just bring it back up a little bit like that. And we'll just make it kind of bounce back and forth between going up and down. And there we go. Okay. So technically, if I play the animation, it's only animated on this Y value. And it's going to just go up and down, basically. So that's great. Now, let's take a look at how to deform this a little bit. Um, I'm going to go for a front view right here. And what we can do is on this group, we can select our group as a whole and come over into the deformation uh, menu set and just click on this one, which is the bend. And what will happen is it'll have a bend that's attached to that. And you'll see a bend handle over here. Yours will probably be called bend one handle. And all you have to do is really just sort of get over here into your um, attribute editor and look for this bend three and here's our controls for that so now we can sort of bend it and do some strange stuff with it like that um, which is cool but it's not really what we want so i'm going to go ahead and set this to zero all right and we really want this um, bend to be more like in you know parallel with this so what i'll do is just sort of switch over here into my channel box and look at this bend three handle and what we want to do is really rotate it on its Z axis. Um, so I'm going to rotate it on the Z by 90 degrees. And then I want to rotate the Y um, as well, 90 degrees. OK, so now when I go back to that bend handle, I should be able to use the curvature to make it do something more like, you know, something more flippy floppy like that. OK, well, that's cool. So let's set this at, say, zero, and let's go back to the beginning of the animation. And before we do anything, though, we really want this bend handle to be parented to this, this group. OK, so essentially, I'll select the bend handle first and then command select this parent group and make sure you're in your general tabs up here and go ahead and parent that. And now that, that bend deformer will travel along with this group and it won't move its place. So that's cool. Okay, so let's look at, at what's happening here and mess around with the curvature now. Um, because this is, is going up and down, let's just maybe say take the curvature and, and move it back and forth. So we'll start here with a, a keyframe. I'm just gonna set it at zero, it turns red. And we'll move it forward a little bit and I think I'll make the curvature sort of fly back like that. I'll right mouse, right mouse click on the curvature word there and set key. And then I'll move forward a little bit more and let's just make it go the other way. And I'm gonna go ahead and set key. And I'm gonna make it go forward a little bit more like that. Maybe bring it back to, maybe bring it back to the zero mark. All right, and right mouse click and set key. Now, 
as it's going through its journey here, you'll see that it sort of does its own thing. Now it's curving, it's doing some funny stuff, and there you go. Okay, so there you have it. Let's do one more thing. Let's just select this text only. And let's look for, make sure we have that selected in here. That's our, our surface. And in this case, we want to be in our polysurface shape. And we want to sort of see where that is. There's our polysurface 4, and it's zeroed out. So now what I can do is I can sort of pull this in and out and around. So I'll go ahead and, and set a keyframe on it. Um, I'm going to move my camera over here a little bit. We're going to pull it out like this on the Z axis and move it back on the Z. So let's sort of start with a, a Z value of 0, where it should be. And we're at our first frame. I'm going to go ahead and click right mouse click, set a key, and we'll pull it forward a little bit. And in this case, I might want to move this text out. Okay, I'll move it out to there, and I'm going to... Actually, it should be auto keyframed. Yeah, it's auto keyframed there. So you can see where it's sticking with the group and it's sticking with the bend deformer. And if I move it around here and then say maybe move it all the way back down into the back there, it's going to be showing up in the back. And as it comes around forward here, I might want to move it back up, move it back up forward. And there's my keyframe. Okay, so that's it pretty easy stuff okay and you can get as complicated as you want um, obviously this is just a, a real quick setup and um, yeah have fun with that okay so super duper okay I gotta cut out of here I gotta go eat and have a good time so there you go thanks for watching happy Thanksgiving and um, as always be a good person read a book and um, come back and watch more tutorials all right, we'll catch you for the next one.